Alright, let's move on to what if what if Ultron Ultron won. One. <laughs> I gotta tell you, that I, shit was, was I was locked. I was really digging this episode because it's just like you could tell over time there was gonna be something that was just too big for the watcher to ignore. Well, we certainly found it. God damn. <laughs> Ultron vision with an, with an infinity body. Right. Just, well, the, the way he took out Thanos was... <laughs> I was just going to mention that. I'm like watching the episode and I'm just like, yo, without hesitation, just slice. Done. The mad who now? <laughs> the mad two halves, oh, that's what he is. Half of all life, huh? <laughs> yeah, how does half of all life feel? <laughs> that cut was perfectly balanced, as all things should be. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. But... I also, love, I also love how Clint was, uh... He was everything I wanted him to be in Age of Ultron, just a menace to Ultron. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, not, Clint doesn't get enough love. He really doesn't. Which is why I'm looking forward to Hawkeye coming in a few months. Not even a few yeah. months. Like, next month. It's going to be Marvel's Christmas movie. Yeah. Starring Hawkeye. <laughs> and I'm here for it, okay? I am so here for that. Hawkeye the Hawkeye, based off of one of my favorite favorite comic books Matt Fraction's Hawkeye I cannot wait I can't wait uh, <clears throat> but this this was the true age of Ultron not the weekend of Ultron the <laughs> Ultron <laughs> well, you know that's kind of the problem they for their second movie they, they really had to they needed a big villain but all of the Avengers' big villains were pretty comparable, so yeah. Yeah. having someone to fill a gap while they build up to Thanos for Endgame was... I mean... It, I don't know. I've heard people mention that the thing about Age of Ultron is it's, it's good because it sets up so many other things that happen throughout the MCU. It, it's, it's only good because it just sets up all these different things up. It helps to start the division between the Avengers. You get Wanda and all the stuff she's invo involved with. You get Vision, the revelation of the Mind Stone. And, and there's just so much shit that goes down in Age of Ultron that kind of... Ultron is just kind of afterthought afterwards. Let's be real. Yeah... Which is funny, because I read the original Age of Ultron comic book storyline, and <laughs> it's because, uh, fuck, Marvel always wants to relive Age of Apocalypse, which was their best, like, dystopian future storyline originally, until that movie got made, and oof. Oof, oof. You guys gotta stop calling it these things ages of because you're not really addressing the actual ages of these things. But whatever. Age of Apocalypse was really popular. They did Age of Ultron, which was all about Ultron completely taking over the world. Wolverine goes back in time, tries to stop Hank Pym, who was the original creator of Ultron in the comics, and then he just keeps fucking up the timeline each time he does that. So what? Sounds like the plot of Days of Future Past, honestly. Basically. <laughs> it, it really was essentially just that. But the thing about Age of Ultron is... It was, it was a big, interesting kind of menace situation. And, like, a lot of things in the MCU... Like, I'm gonna be real with you. The MCU takes from... Two, well, three sources usually. It takes from a character's origin, what happens mm -hmm. to a character or their look in the Ultimate Comics, uh, usually the beginning, you know, before it got banana balls crazy, and some form of Marvel writing that happened within the last 15 years. Because there are, phew, there are not a lot of Marvel stories that do not 
take place within the last 15 years that they pull from. Yeah. That they don't pull from, I should say. But... Yeah. So, likely we'll be seeing Peter get the way of the spider in, in the MCU, which will be cool, I think. Well, who knows? Hopefully. It would be interesting. It would be nice to see, if nothing else. But... Yeah. In terms of this, in terms of the what if... The real fun was, let's be honest, Ultron versus Uatu the Watcher, because, man, th- that was throwing some cosmic hands left and right, son. Yeah, and all the different backdrops and realities he kept passing through. <laughs> oh my god, my eyes were glued, <laughs> glued to the screen, and I just had the biggest grin. That shit was just, oof. It's just like, I mentioned I'm, how I love, love the aesthetics in What If. Yeah, so this yeah. pushed it to the absolute best po- best places. It is, it's not every day that you say you're going to punch somebody into next week that you're also able to follow up on that, but not just next week, next week in the next dimension over. Next week, next month, next year, you'll hit the next dimension, dimension after that, dimension after that, skip the one after that, go to the one down the block, come back to this dimension, then hit him across the one you passed earlier. That's more or less how this fight went down, and it was fucking incredible. I also love that he escaped to the universe where Doctor where Doctor Strange lost his, his heart and was, uh, you know... Just had to be a smug asshole, didn't you, Steven? <laughs> it's just like, listen, it's about the only thing he could be smug about at that point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, pff, listen, you done fucked up, Strange, so <laughs> that one's on you, my guy, but, you know, if you want to be a petty bitch, that's fine, too, I guess. Right, ain't nothing <clears throat> to be but that, but... I gotta tell you, I love that one visual where Ultron had knocked Uatu in one universe, and then he looks up in the sky, and you see Ultron just getting ready to chomp down on the entire universe. I'm like, man, that is on some galactic shit right there. Bro, the fact that they did that, I just thought, like, yo, y'all can't comp- y'all cannot bullshit me now. Y'all better be able to do Galactus. <laughs> y'all better be able to do Galactus. You got Fantastic Four. I'm waiting. Right. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm watching. I'm judging. Right. Oh, I can't wait. I, I, they have to. They have to be able to do it right. They have to. They. I mean, at this point, if they do it wrong, then 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 you you let that money get to your head, mouse. Dude, it'll be the that's it. Third time in the row, the Fantastic Four has not been able to be properly adapted to the big screen. Although I do still have. A little bit of defense for, like, the original Fantastic Four movies. They weren't perfect, but uh, they got some They were stuff certainly right. better than the fucking remake we got. Uh, fan four stick. Oh, God. But... Why did they have to remove the thing's pants? <laughs> He's just walking That's around cool. with his rock junk out. Like, not a soul asked for that. That was not the direction you take that in. Uh, Jesus Christ, even Marvel got that right with Korg. Yeah, 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 actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, goddamn, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants to see rock people junk. And if you do, I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen those parts of the internet. No, no bueno. Ugh. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, one last thing I will want to mention is the fact that, man, that scene where Hawkeye was just, like, plummeting into the horde of Ultron drones, just firing off that one arrow that's just gonna light everything up like the 4th of July, that was a beautiful shot, man. Gee. Yeah. Ugh, that was good shit. That scene, though, the scene where he was just, like, I told you, I'm tired. Like, I can't. I can't even deny. It. I felt what Hawkeye was feeling. That shit was a mood. Oh my god, it was such a mood. And I love how Uatu's just like, it's right there. It's right there. <laughs> That's right. Stop, stop being depressed. And just, stop being depressed. The answer's right there. <laughs> he's like he's trying so hard not to say anything, but he he was so ready to just go in there and slap him and be like, it's right there, you dumbass. <laughs> 
I love that. Also, I loved I loved how upbeat Black Widow was trying to be. <laughs> she was really crying. Right. I, like, you want to be there for your friend. I can understand that. Like, no, don't make this fun. Like, why not? We're... <laughs> Ain't nothing else to do. Like we we can't really do exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's all. Yeah, I think that's it. So uh, we can move on to the next topic. All right. Next on the agenda is Venom. The v- v- Venom. Let there be carnage. <laughs> I'm gonna fuck the lyrics out of the goddamn song. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> knock knock with the devil again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this one's all you because you've seen it and I haven't. <laughs> all right, uh, do you want spoilers or do you want me to keep it spoiler free? I don't care. I'll see it either way. Uh, honestly, tell me how you feel about the movie in how, general before you start like going into it. How I feel about the movie. It was still just about as fun as the previous movie. If you enjoyed that, you'll probably enjoy this. It also does help that they kind of fix a few of the visual issues in terms of the way the symbiote on symbiote action looked. Because... Oh, that last that last movie when uh Venom and Riot were getting into it, I, I remember b- and a lot of people said this too. It's just like, okay, who who's who? What's what? What's happening? It, it's almost as bad as those Michael Bay Transformers movies where it's just like it's just metal on metal. I can't tell what's happening. It's, it's, yeah, when you when you have characters when you have a black on when you have a black on gray character fight, it's. Real hard to tell who's who, because lighting is a very important factor, <clears throat> but lighting... No, the problem is they put they had a black character and a gray character fighting at against night. a black backdrop at night! At night! Against a black backdrop! Like, come on! So they fixed that. They yeah. did better on this one. Oh my god, yes. Like, Carnage is so distinctively red <laughs> that even at night you can tell where the motherfucker is he's always kind of, honestly it's it's actually pretty funny how often both venom and carnage are in fairly well lit areas that i'm just like well damn guys thank you I, i'm not <laughs> questioning what the fuck i'm looking at half the time when stuff is going on so um i don't fully remember like from the trailer how carnage looks i think you only get like a brief glimpse what appearance do they go with do they make him look like red venom or do they make him look like splotchy red because it's mixed in it with it's a symbiote mixed with cletus's blood it's the splotchy red nice yeah does he still have like a, does he still have like a black face oh yes most or- definitely it is he is very distinct when you look at him the the only thing that kind of threw me is that because Venom they do they make sure that he is big bulky Venom like Venom is like oh yeah I am jacked as a motherfucker it is very distinct how Venom look with Carnage there's the beef yeah with Carnage he constantly has his tendrils just going everywhere like just like if if you've ever watched the uh original spider-man animated series from the 90s it's basically that he's constantly like tendrils everywhere constantly changing undulating everywhere yeah changing his hands and like sharp objects like swords and knives and slicing at everything he possibly can um the one thing I will say is that it is still PG-13, so, but it is a very hard PG-13, because the amount of people whose heads get bitten off, it's, uh, it's not like it's happening left and right, but it happens enough that you're just like, man, y'all, uh, y'all biting off a lot of people's heads here, that's <laughs> it. It happens like, just like, enough times that it's just like, damn, guys. <laughs> Looking like Ozzy Osbourne in front of all these damn bats. Is that joke still track? <clears throat> I feel like I feel like that was years ago, and the man hadn't done it since. And stop biting people's heads off. <laughs> Shit. 
Hey, <laughs> and I, I mean, I guess I'll see what you mean. Yeah, I it's the continued odd couple thing with Venom and Eddie, kind of you know calling each other losers and stuff like that. But I mean, that was the fun of the previous Venom movie for the most part, and they just kind of doubled down on that to a certain degree. And I mean, it, it's it's pretty good in a lot of areas. Although I will say they it makes. They kind of make Eddie feel dumb. Uh, uh, like, not like stupid, stupid, but he's kind of like dumb in certain areas. And it's just like, Eddie, come on. Come on, man. Eddie, come on. <laughs> and another thing I will say that kind of threw me. Well, two more things. In terms of Carnage's design, I do love the way he looks. But when he and Venom actually do come to blows fully, there comes a point where. Carnage is coming at Venom, and then he's coming at Venom, and then he's coming at him, and then I slowly crane my head up to realize, oh shit, Carnage is taller than Venom. Like, what? And that really threw me off, because I'm not used to that. Usually Carnage is small and lanky, but still much more powerful than Venom. Here, it's just like, oh, he a big boy. He's a big red boy. He was taller. Is he still, like, skinny? I mean, he's still, uh, like, he's thin enough that, I mean, th like, seriously, he just really does look like you pulled Carnage off of the pages and just added a shit ton of CG. Like, to the point where it's just like, okay, yeah, uh, damn, that, that, that was the best portrayal of Carnage you could possibly have in live action, I'm gonna be real with you. It's just, it really threw me, because it's just like, because he doesn't look that tall. Well, like, he would be that much taller than Venom, that's the thing. And that's what really threw me off, because, let's, let me be clear, Venom already looks like a tall motherfucker. Like, like, he is heads above most people in this movie. Like, the one scene where he's in, like, a rave or something, it's like, Venom is tall as shit. And then Carnage is taller than that. That's what threw me. It's just like, oof. It's like, the, the, these, these kiddies are already biggins. You just made them a little bit even bigger. <laughs> and bigger and meaner. <laughs> Just because they could. Yeah, more or less. More or less. Although, I mean, I, I'm not sure if they were trying to say something about the fact that Carnage gave in to the more animalistic desires, and so was eating more people and getting more brains, and that was juicing them up or something like that. And... Mm. I don't know. I, it's hard to say. Because you have the scene from the trailer where Venom is just like, Oh shit! That is a red one! But he never really specifies why Carnage being red is something to be fearful of. Like, why does it matter that he's red? So it was just a pointless joke? More or less. God. God. In, unless I miss, I... Unless I miss something in terms of the dialogue, it just seemed to be a pointless joke. Although, I feel like, if I remember correctly, they did add in a few lines where Car where Venom is more like, that is a big red one. Big and red. And I feel like it was that he was more intimidated by just how massive Carnage was. Which made a little bit more sense in the context of things. But why he defined the red part, I'm not really sure. One last thing that I will say kind of threw me is that the thing about Carnage and its relationship with Cletus is that they are completely simpatico. <laughs> Of one mind completely. Like, whereas yeah. Venom and Eddie, they do have their own separate personalities for the most part. But that was something that kind of developed over time. And they started becoming more and more of their own characters until today. Carnage and Cletus are not completely in sync. And that really threw me. Really? Yeah, because there comes a point well, what... where Carnage is talking, well, Cletus is talking to Carnage, and Carnage is talking back, and I'm just like, that was never a thing. Maybe they just wanted to make it a thing so that, like, 
Because, you know, they're like, oh, well, Eddie can talk with Venom. Why can't Cletus talk with Carnage? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to be real. The whole fact that Carnage and Cletus are not completely always, like, completely on the same page <clears throat> about everything, that's what comes into play with how Venom ultimately manages to get one over on Carnage. And so, from that perspective, it makes a lot of sense because, yeah, Carnage was not going to win this otherwise. I mean, Venom was not going to win this otherwise. Carnage was going to beat the ever living shit out of Venom. Like, Carnage. Oh, they basically. Carnage was a beast. They, they, they had to write in uh, this flaw just to give them an out later on. More or less, because it's just like. Listen, there's a reason why whenever Carnage comes into the picture, you don't just have one person go up against Carnage. Except for when it was Deadpool, but even Deadpool had a bit of help on that one. But, you know, th there was a reason why when Carnage first appeared, it was Venom and Spider-Man teaming up to go after the Carnage. Because it's just like... Carnage is just way too much, and I'm glad they kept that within the span of the movie. It's just, uh, I'm a little iffy on them just writing in an excuse for why, you know, Venom could ultimately defeat him in the end. Likely because they couldn't bring in Spider-Man yet, because Marvel was just like, no, 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 we have to wait before we can do that reveal. <laughs> Essentially. Which... I mean, I know you got spoiled on that little aspect. Did you want to talk about that, or... Uh, what exactly? Never mind. Uh, was there anything else you wanted to talk about in terms of this? Because, honestly, that's really all I can... I feel like I want to go into in terms of the movie without getting too deep in the weeds in it. Listen, it's totally your choice. Yeah. I, I think that's <clears throat> all I'll really say, to be honest. Because there are some interesting twists in terms of the story that really do come in like most of the stuff i talked about is just like it's, it's kind of predictable one once you see it happen it's just like okay that that kind of makes sense why they would take it in that direction but some of the more surprising elements they do make for good surprises and i will say i am I mean this they're two for two on the venom movies like it wasn't a fluke it's just Good movies that are fun to watch, pretty each interesting, pretty decent, uh, and I'm interested to see where they go for a third movie. Hmm. Okay. I mean, did you like the original Venom? Things I liked about it and things I didn't like about it. Yeah, I mean, th this one really won't change too much of your mind, aside from the visuals are a lot more clear. There's a lot more lighting in a lot of the action scenes, so it's very easy to see. Um, a lot of the stuff from the first movie that was pretty fun is still very prevalent here. They don't have like an overabundance of characters, which actually, now that I think about it, like they kept it to about shit. If you don't include the symbiotes, you had about two, three, five, six. Yeah, they focus on all of six characters. Right? Damn, yeah, they they kept it kind of yeah they they introduce all of like three new characters in this and that that's about it and honestly that was the best way to go it's just like they kept it fairly simple straightforward and the plot is very easy to follow there's no weird twists no weird turns or anything like that no convoluted plans or anything it's I mean it's it's just a decent movie that's fun enough to watch <laughs> probably give it a look. Yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely worth at least one watch, whether you actually want to go to the movies or you just want to wait till it comes out on video. Okay. 